Hi there, good afternoon. Kirsten Neese with Cornerstone Homes. I'm out here today with Kara Sewers, the field manager for Chickahominy Falls Woodside Farms. Um, it's been a busy couple weeks for you guys. I know we had a big calendar event where we changed from fall, uh, summer to fall, but that's not just a date change for you guys. There's a lot of production activity out here. So Kara, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's been going on out here at the farm in these last couple weeks? Sure. So um, as summer is coming to an end, we're sort of in a big push to get all of our transplants that were in the greenhouse and all of the direct zone items that we want um, to take us through the fall and the winter. So as we sort of walk through what you see on the farm now is pretty much what we're going to have the past the next few months. Um, all of our summer items we're slowly taking out. You can see our big tall okra forest. It's still producing some okra, but we'll slowly continue um, taking summer beds out and putting cover crop in. Um, but we have a lot of fall is all about leafy greens and roots. They like the cooler weather. So we have salad, arugula, bunched, um, bunched greens like kale, and collards. Over here, um, this is broccoli coming up and some of the purple top and hawk rye turnips. And then this is sort of our swath of all the um, cut and come greens that you see at the market as bad greens. So there's spinach, um, our spicy mix, our braising mix, a lot of arugula. Um, so we'll have that in plenty over the next few weeks. So I'm um, looking here, Kara, so this that's been kind of, looks like it's been eaten by the rabbit, right? <laughs> that's all been harvested and taken in for the, for the farm stand. Sure. But that will come back and yep. reproduce through the fall season now again more. And I see you kind of, you know, intersperse what you harvest with what's still growing. Sure, yeah, all these are cut and come again green. So if you cut the plant a couple inches, like right above what is called the crown, it'll keep producing. We normally get, um, three to four cuts in the summer from our greens, probably a bit more in the fall and winter as things kind of slow down, um, but we'll continue to Awesome, just I harvest. look forward to the greens so much. <laughs> They're one of my favorite things at the stand. And the okra, you call this an okra forest. Oh so yeah. So cool. <laughs> the stalk size is just unbelievable to me, how thick and, I mean, it's a couple inches thick down there at the bottom in some places. Right, and now as we um, have to harvest, you really have to, you know, grab the top and bend it over because they're so tall. That's right. I'm looking forward to one last jambalaya from the, with the oh, okra yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and then it looks like, what is this, cabbage? Yeah, we have some red head cabbage and uh, green head cabbage here. And we actually did some interplanting. Um, in this bed, we did radishes, so French breakfast and the cherry bell radishes. Um, and sort of the concept is the radishes have a quick maturity rate compared to cabbage. So we'll pull those out before the cabbage is ready to be harvested. And we did a similar thing in this bed, but with hawk rye turnips. Very cool. Just in time for October fast, all that cabbage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might be a little bit later, but it's coming. <laughs> good, good. So as we're entering the hops trellis, what happened to all the hops? Where did they go? Yeah, we uh, harvested them, gosh, maybe like three, three weeks ago. We sort of did a slow harvest and did it over time. Um, we reached out to some folks in the community who are home brewers and they took some home and then we're um, sort of thinking about how to we vacuum sealed and froze them but we are going to try to extract some of the oils and continue experimenting with the rest of the harvest um, but if folks are interested in home brewing we do have some hops still available that awesome. were just vacuum sealed not too long ago and then as we look past it, we've got, what, some squash that's kind of finishing out um, with some lettuces. And so the, you know, the leaves that are kind of larger and browning out, that's, that's sort of at the end of its legs? Yeah, that's a lot of our winter squash. They are, we're like harvesting that as well. We have butternut, um, acorn squash, which y'all have seen at the market already. Uh, an heirloom that I love, it's, it's like a banana sized squash this large that's called a Georgia um, candy roaster. 
Uh, so we're excited about that. And some of that you cure, you what, what you call curing. Can you explain what curing is to the rest of us and sure. kind of how that works? Yeah, curing is a process that it um, sort of makes the squash sweeter, but it, it takes the water out of it. And it also allows some of these winter squash varieties to store up to five, six months or longer. Um, so the butternut right now, it's sitting at like 80 to 85 degrees. Um, it also wants 80 to 85% humidity. So we sort of created a little storage room for the butternut and it's curing for two weeks and then we'll start bringing it out and um, you can eat it right away, but you can also, you know, keep it and it'll last longer. Fantastic, one of my favorites. Um, and we're finishing out here with the zinnias, which are so gorgeous, even still this time of year. Yeah, we've got zinnias and in the background, um, sort of the last of our tomatoes, peppers and eggplant. Um, we'll probably just continue harvesting from those until the frost and then um, take those plants out and put it into a winter cover crop um, for the rest of the year. Well, great. I know we want to head on over to the other side of the farm, so we're going to take a quick break here and we're going to walk on over to the other side of the farm and then we'll reintroduce ourselves over there. See you in a minute. Great. Back again. Now we're over on the west side of the property here at Woodside Farms. Um, Kara and her team have been super busy this year getting these beds into production and formed and irrigated and you know they've already turned over a couple times I think but I'll let Kara do all the talking and uh, kind of tell you what's going on over here. Sure. So uh, this whole block is sort of our fall brassica block. It's going to um, get us through fall, winter, and even probably partially into spring. So we have curly kale, two types of collards, Tuscan kale, red Russian kale, Siberian, and chard. Um, and then over on this side, we have some um, our last succession of summer squash. Some green beans, um, which is pretty exciting to have at this point of the year. And then uh, these beds right here, it's our winter cover crop. So in these beds, we did a mixture of oats, winter pea, and vetch. Um, and this will grow for the rest of the season. Um, it'll produce a lot of biomass to add back into the soil. Um, when we sort of incorporate it into the spring. And vetch is also a really great, um, it's a legume, so it's a great nitrogen fixer. So we're hoping to really um, help build our soil, prevent erosion, kind of keep it covered over the winter, um, even with crops that we're not harvesting from. Awesome, I love to hear that. That's very cool. Uh, not something that your everyday gardener would would know to do and be able to preserve your and and fortify your soil so that's great um, so as we look a little further west i see there is um, one hive still in action over there it sounds like we had a little bit of trouble with our hives when we first brought them on this spring but we have still have one that's being maintained by sure uh bob, bob mahone and diane cullen are sort of like heading that up i know that there's a few other community members that are helping them but um bob mahone is your man if you're interested you can check in with him and get more details about um, how the bees are doing and his plans for overwintering them because um, they do normally need some winterization and feed getting them through these colder months uh, well which makes me think about you know we have volunteers that work here on the farm that are members of the community here that live here at Chicomany Falls and then other volunteers that are from the greater Richmond community that come out and work as well but then we have this thing called work share can you describe that a little bit and kind of how that's worked out for you guys yeah um, we have been so thankful for a work share program <laughs> we definitely couldn't do this year without them um, so our work share folks committed to uh, work a whole season for, with us. They started in April and they're going to be with us till the end of October. Um, they committed to a five hour shift one day a week um, and in exchange they get a CSA share. Um, so it's been really great helping them. They are having them help us. <laughs> they help us harvest, weed, process, um, maintain beds, compost. They do 
all sorts of stuff. Right. Um, so it's nice because normally there's what, three or four of you out here on the farm on a regular day. So when you have all that extra manpower and th that's a lot of hours of work that you guys could get done with all that extra help. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of help. And, you know, now they're part of our community and add a nice, um, I don't know, diverse dynamic, which is great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know some of them were school teachers. And then when they went back to school recently online or even in person, they they were doing their work share during the weekdays. But because they're in school now, they're even doing it some on the Saturday, yeah. on Saturday, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, they switched days, which was helpful. Good. And if they're in, if anybody's interested in the work share program, they can just email the farm and say, you know, I'm interested in that. You don't need anybody else this year, but you know, you would be certainly starting to think about that for next year at this point. Yeah, definitely. Folks can reach out and um, sometimes over, sometime over this next few months, we'll send something out in the newsletter and post on our website too, as far as details go and um, what the program will look like this coming year. Great. Do we want to talk anything else about what's growing back here? Sure. We can, um, I'm excited. This is, we're going to have a whole 10 beds of, uh, carrots. Oh my gosh. I love. <laughs> so we did it in, um, we've sowed them in succession. So like three beds and then like two weeks later, a few more beds. And we've done this, um, for this whole block. We're actually going to, um, harvest our last salad and make one last bed of carrots. But um, these carrots are, yeah, they're going to last us for a while. Once it, uh, when it freezes, a lot of the carbohydrates in the carrots turn to sugar. So that's why winter carrots are always uh, sweeter than summer carrots. Um, we haven't quite started harvesting from them yet. We're waiting till they get a little bigger, but it's something you can look forward to. Awesome. It sounds like some <laughs> carrot soup to me. And I love the eggplant. We had some of this last night um, on our, with our um, spaghetti, uh, roasted a bunch of eggplant. So Ooh, yum. Um, really delicious. That's been a nice addition to our family menu. That sounds great. Looks like some more peppers. Yep. We got peppers, more okra, tomatoes over here, another round of um, cucumbers. Um, great. And then this section right here, we had it uh, sown in buckwheat, which is another type of cover crop. It has beautiful white flowers. The, our pollinators and bees loved this area. Um, but we cut it back and it's gonna, it might re-sow before the end of October, like self-sow itself. Um, but we're sort of letting it die down and mulch down. And um, at the end of October, we'll plant this whole block in garlic. So we'll have, we'll have a nice... another nice garlic yeah. thing next year. That's awesome. Um, well, and up here we have our orchard, which uh, was our first year that we were able to harvest from that this year. So that was mm -hmm. really nice. And I know we're looking forward to having um, another, you know, winter with that and seeing how. All right. Now we're back over here in the behind the stone house and behind the um, production facility and in the pick your own area. So Kara, take it away. <laughs> sure. So um, our pick your own, it has a lot of, some perennials, some annuals as far as flowers go um, and herbs. Um, we also have a, a nice patch of strawberries, which um, this year we didn't get a ton of strawberries, but it was their first year in the ground. So our plan is to mulch them when it gets cooler, um, overwinter them, and hopefully we'll have a better um, production this coming spring and summer. But that's so normal with a lot of things that you grow, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of times the first year of production is never the best and you don't really know. So it's a lot of an experimentation. So it's kind of like knowing what works well in what area and moving yeah. things around. And strawberries in general, um, most strawberry growers don't get a lot the first year. It's They just sort of need to rev up and get more growth on them. And get the plants a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And then there's some flowers that pick your own if the people wanted to grab some of that that's um, open and available as well, right? Yes, yep. And we've sort of been changing over some of these beds. It had um, like cucamelons and more tomatoes, but we're putting in um, some more greens like kale, arugula, salad. So folks can definitely come out here with their knives and scissors and um, cut some salad and if you're questioning how to do it just grab one of the farmers and we will um, we'll show you the proper way 
And so I wanted to end with this. This is the, our trellis of um, loofah squash, which I had the best time with my mom out here a couple weeks ago sharing this with her. And um, Sean actually was out here with us and showed us all. So I was, I'm anxious to share our viewers with our viewers everything that I learned. So Kara, go ahead. Yeah, I, I love our loofah tunnel. It's just so fun. Here, you want to go over um, there and all? Sure. But loofah, it's a type of squash. It's a gourd, um, like a bath loofah. And you can see like all these green squashes are loofahs. Um, they've been here all season. So they've been here for quite a few months and we're allowing them to just continue to dry. This one's starting to dry. You'll see that um, they'll change into this brownish color and you'll be able to hear the seeds shake. Um, and that's when you know it's about ready to harvest and take off the vine and then um, Part of the process is just peeling this outer skin off and you'll kind of get this loofah shell, shell or this is the shell. Um, you have to sort of take the seeds out and we'll cut them up, but they're great sponges. Um, I have one at my house from a previous year growing them and I love it. It's great. And, and <laughs> we were even talking, Sean was talking about how they'll cut them into coins. So they'll cut them and cut each sponge and then another farmer is going to use them and make some um, goat milk oh, cool. um, soaps with them and that sort of thing that would be available at our farm stand so um, just a really cool way to like see you know everything in action here that kind of comes full circle and right into your home um, not necessarily in your kitchen so <laughs> yeah. um, very cool it's been really uh, entertaining to be with you today Kara and uh, learned lots about what's going on here in the fall appreciate it and we'll hopefully Great. have one more installment maybe towards the end of the fall season as we um, head into the winter and sort of see what's going on. Perfect. Thank you. Bye.